Well, at my local wood supply store, I purchased a couple of these 4x4 black walnut posts. I sized them up, cut them into sections, and mounted one on my lathe for making a bud vase. In this project, I also got to use my new spindle roughing gouge for the first time, and it works great. And once it's round, you can really see the grain coming out. And this walnut grain is beautiful. But can take a toll on the sharpness of your tools. So by this point, I decided to use a glass insert tube so I can use real flowers and real plants in the vase instead of a, making a hollow form. And I just made some dovetail tenon on one side to attach it to my scroll chuck and then I'm going to just drill the appropriate size hole for the glass tube. And you could do this step after you shape the outside of the vase but it just depends on how thin you're going to make your vase and I'm going to make mine pretty thick so I don't have an issue with stability. So I'm making a simple design. It's bigger at the bottom and narrower at the top of the vase. And if you don't know this by now, I am really, really big on form and having that aesthetic pleasing to the eye. And in order to achieve that, I usually section out the piece so I know where I'm going to make the piece bigger and where I'm going to make it thinner and at what point it starts to taper.
And you can start to see here that the vase is starting to take its shape. And for my final cut, I'll use a one inch skew to smooth out the outside. Just to help with less sanding. This is also worth mentioning. I often make the top diameter and the bottom diameter the same size. Again, I believe that that helps with its visual appeal. Here I'm wiping it down with some rubbing alcohol, 90%, and this helps to raise the grain for a light quick sand and helps me to clean out the pores and visually inspect it for any imperfections or unwanted tool marks. I also coved out the bottom a little bit so it sits more flush on a surface. As well as adding a very small cove to the top for aesthetics. Now this is where some of you are going to cringe when I apply a paint to this gorgeous wood. But don't despair, I'm not going to paint the whole vase. I am gonna show a lot of the natural wood. And I'm going to use a milk paint. And it's good practice to clean up all of your sawdust and wood chips around your project when you're going to use paint. That way none of the chips or dust gets into the paint and then onto your project. I chose the milk paint because I want a brushed matte uh, kind of a chalky look and milk paint has been around Probably before the written word you can also make a distressed look with milk paint But I don't want the distressed look on this piece So I'm going to apply several several coats to make sure that it's a very solid unified color and You can also use chalk paint for that too. It's good for making a solid color Milk paint is also great if you want the grain to show through the paint. Just wipe some of the excess off and don't put as many coats on. As you can see here, milk paint dries very quickly. This is only about 10 minutes after I applied a second coat. For safety, always use handles when wire burning. Now I'm applying black 
milk paint and a little band to blend the textures together and to make it look like it's more of a stitched fabric pattern. And I'm just using a nylon uh, brush, uh, an artist brush. Then after the paint is dry, I'm going to add this finishing coat. It's by the same company, uh, Plaid for Folk Art brand and I really like the folk art brand I've been using that stuff for years and years even when I used to do ceramics and I don't really know what is in this although it feels a little bit like mineral oil I'm just going to with a rag apply it all over including the wood the bare wood then after the milk paint finish was dried to the touch somewhat I just took this saw and parted off the tenon most of the way and then finished screwing it on the rest of the way. Hey, it works. And then used a wood chisel and some sandpaper to finish cleaning up what was left. Then I reapplied a couple more coats of the milk paint along with the finish. I'd also like to mention that I'm not sponsored by any of these products in this video. I'm just trying some out and I like to use them. And they do make a bonding primer for milk paint, same brand, uh, for any surfaces that are already finished. This came out really, really nice. I really like the look of it. I liked the, the chalky texture. The oil is nice. It's not slimy or greasy or anything. It's been a, a couple of days. The insert came out great, fits in there nicely. Really, really happy with how it came out and the green and everything is beautiful. I'd also like to mention in the upcoming videos, you'll probably see a lot of uh, changes in the shop. I'm reorganizing, reworking the shop, repainting the walls, getting it a little brighter in here. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you have not subscribed, please feel free to do so. I do have an Amazon shop if you're interested in any of the tools or products sometimes that I, that I use in my videos, you can usually find them there. Or you could just shoot me a message and I'll let you know uh, what they are, where I get them from. So until next time, stay safe in your shop at all times and take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm.